for our sermon today, we're going to begin with revisiting our reading. Even in a crowded mind, there is still room to experience peace. How often are our minds crowded? How often do we focus on the sounds that have a tendency to disrupt our lives, disrupt our peace? But we know there are masters who can do this. We know that there are people who have spent time meditating so that they can be here now, so that they can be in the space of peace, even amidst turmoil. The next line is, so take delight in the little things that mean something to you. Because that is where our peace lives, in these small things like seeds, like children, like a quiet moment. Even 30 seconds at a traffic light belongs only to you. No one else. You do not have to have every small detail of your life sorted out to appreciate the small and seemingly insignificant. We never have our lives sorted out. We never have everything the way we want it. We never look at the world and say, ah, finally, everything's all as it should be. Can you find peace nonetheless? Can you find peace in a sea? For even if you knew you were going to have all of the answers you were looking for a year from now, you would inevitably still have doubts and things you had to figure out. How many times have you looked back after an ordeal where things worked out, you're still here, you're not finished yet, maybe it didn't work out perfectly, but you survived it. Had you known at that time before it all happened that things would work out, would you have been at peace during it? Is it possible to look at moments in your life where you are freaking out and say, you know what, but this will eventually work out. Maybe all I need to do is remain calm and it will work out even faster. Or maybe I'll come up with the solution that I might not have thought of had I been all rung up in my worry. There will always be unknowns and questions that you will struggle with. So perhaps more so than perhaps trying to fix it, you can learn to find peace in the middle of them. I invite you to try that on purpose. The next time there's just a cacophony around you, not just of noise, but of negative energy or angst, fear, can you find a moment of peace in the middle of it? Even one second of it before it all washes back on you because you weren't strong enough to hold it back. But one second. Time is a construct of our imagination, which means that one second in other parts of the universe are thousands of years long. One second can heal an hour's worth of grief if you just give your body that second of peace. Imagine what you could do with five whole minutes. Learn to see that in the trenches, grace grows up. It shows up and reminds you things will inevitably change and you will grow all the same. There are so many trenches in the world right now, literal and figurative, places where people are hiding themselves from war in the hopes that they will survive to a more peaceful time. Sometimes they do reprehensible things from these spaces because their fear is controlling their actions. Can you 
send them peace right now? Because in this space where we all are, this is a peaceful moment. Nothing is bothering us. No one is trying to hurt us. We have homes and families to go home to. Peaceful little pockets of the world we can say are our own. Take that sensation and radiate it. Send it to the trenches. Send it into the hearts of people who believe that violence is the right way to do things. Because our enemies are not people. Our enemy is the idea that violence is the way, is the way. Send peace to that fog, that fog. You are more than your worry. You are so much more than your worry. Your worry is not a real thing. Your worry is a figment of your imagination, a construct that you've created so that you can feel like you have control over the situation. Have peace with the lack of control. Know that you control so much more than you realize simply by remembering that little spot on your heart that is never without peace. Light it up. Project it outward. It is a real thing. You are not your worry. Not your you are your love. You are more than your doubt. Thank God for doubt. Thank God for what it shows us. Thank God for the curiosity it inspires in us and the questions it makes us ask. When somebody comes to you and says, I'm a peaceful person, it's okay to doubt that. It's okay to say, I bet you can do better because I know I can do better. I believe in you. And my belief in you is inspired by the doubt I have. Your story will still unfold no matter what you have not figured out. That's all about control. <laughs> and we have no control over anything. And that's perfectly okay. We have no control. All we have control over is what we project into the world. And then hopefully what we project in the world finds purchase somewhere where it needs it most. You know, I read in Scientific American this week that they have observed what they believe to be the actual biological process of how our consciousness is connected to the entire universe. And that it's quantum. And they observed it in the process of photosynthesis. You'll have to read the article yourself because I could not quote it well enough to be able to tell you how the heck that happens. But I believed it to be true. I've always believed it to be true. And so I want to take that thought, that belief, that scientific observation that our consciousness, what we think, think, what we wish to project in the universe, the universe there is an actual route into all that exists from your mind, your heart, and that you have so much more power than you realize. That if you feel at peace, that peace will radiate outward because that is what is natural to the universe. Of course, there is destruction and cataclysm and violence in the universe but not wrought by sentient beings as a rule. We get to experience that here as part of the classroom of our life on Earth, but the universe itself seeks only balance, ease. Be a partner with it. Be a principality of peace. 
Outside right now, there, is a, there are trays full of little paper cups with seeds in them. They are all potential. And they're all blessed right now. Already were. And they're only waiting for further blessing to confirm their objective in the world. We actually have the power to confer them with peace. And they will send peace to parts of the world that will never see those flowers, that will never smell their fragrance, that will never know that you planted them. And that's okay. We don't need the credit. We just need the peace. And so as quietly as you will, let's find our way out to the garden now. <laughs>